So I've been studying a lot of World War II maps recently because I'm working on a new GeoLayers 3 Premium course that is all about how to create battle maps. And if you want to learn more about that, you want to get on the list for the uh, pre-sale date and the discounts, I have a link down in the video description. You can learn more about that. But this particular map here from Time Magazine is the inspiration for today's tutorial. And I wanted to figure out how to create these cool branching arrows inside of Adobe After Effects. We have like multiple arrows that are all connected together. And I specifically liked how they flow into each other with these really smooth curves. This was actually really hard to achieve. I wanted to get this look, but also have a functional arrow that I could quickly, you know, basically use as a template and manipulate just by dragging around a, vert a vertex or a vertices and have the arrows move around, but keep these nice curved edges. So let's jump into Adobe After Effects. I'm going to show you what I discovered after weeks of playing around with arrows. So first I'm going to turn on rulers and I'm going to drag a guide down here and edit the position and put it smack dab in the center of my comp. And I'll just lock these guides off. Now I'm going to grab the pen tool and I want to draw out, let's say in this example, I want to have a branching arrow that has a main arrow and then two little arrows branching off of it. So first I'm going to draw my arrow paths. So I'm going to turn off the fill to do this and these are going to be solid stroke colors and we'll have the width at like something like 100. Now I can quickly draw out a path. I'm going to grab this, make sure it's snapped to the guide here. By the way, if you're a newbie to working with paths, you need to constantly switch between the selection tool and the pen tool when you're moving paths around. It could be a little clunky at first. Once you get used to it, you'll um, you'll be more comfortable. But right now, if I just have the pen tool selected and I want to grab this vertex, you'll notice with the pen tool, it's going to instead create a closed path. So I need to switch over to the selection tool and now I can move this down and snap this to the line. So now I've got this uh, first arrow path here. I will click the shape layer and actually rename it arrow one. Now I'm going to just create two duplicates and kind of branch them off. So I will duplicate this command or control D and I'm going to hit G again to activate the pen tool so I can grab the vertex, this end vertex. Let's see that. Let's say the arrow is going this way. So I'm going to move this second vertex and now I can create a new one right here, I'm gonna hold shift and kind of create this 45 degree angle. Now with this one, I can hold alt with the pen tool selected and grab the convert vertex tool and switch this to Bezier. If I hold shift, it's gonna snap. And now we've got this nice little path here. I'll grab this layer again, control D to duplicate this with the pen tool selected, grab this vertex and now bring it down this way. And if I hold shift and grab this one, I can now shift this one down a little bit and then move this. By the way, don't worry about the position of these paths. You can always, uh, basically the way I'm gonna rig this up, it will be very customizable and this is how you will actually work with these arrows is you'll grab the vertices and manipulate them and everything will be attached to them. Okay, so now I've got the, this is what I have so far, I've got these. Now I wanna basically animate them. So to animate these, I need to use a built-in script inside of After Effects called Create Nulls from paths. So if you go to window down here, you'll see right here, create nulls from paths. You should all have this. This has been native to After Effects for seven or eight years now. And to use these to actually, I want to use something called trace path. That's going to add a null and animate it along our each path. So I need to actually select the path for each shape to do that. And a quick way to do this is just select all these layers and then do a keyword search for path. That'll isolate these parameters. Now, two things here. You wanna grab, before you apply the trace path, you need to grab the path parameters, not the path group. You need to grab the actual parameter. And just so that these nulls are named one, two, three, I'm gonna grab this path first, cause this is arrow one. Grab this path, hold control or command to grab all the other paths. And now with them selected, I hit trace paths. Now you'll see if I close all of these layers, I have all of these new nulls. They're called trace arrow path. If I click back to the source name, you can see null one, two, three. And as I scrub my playhead, you'll notice the bounding box of these nulls and they are animating along these paths. If I open up effect controls, you'll also notice that they're looping and it has this little checkbox here. I don't want them to loop. So I'm going to grab all of them, turn off the loop. I want them to simply animate. Um, and now if I hit the U key, I can look at the keyframes of all of them. 
I'm going to grab the end keyframes and drag them all out. Let's say I want this, this arrow to animate on over the course of like five seconds. So actually I'm going to easy ease these in as well and maybe offset them so that there's a little bit of staggered animation here. So they, this one finishes first, this one second, and this one last. Okay, so these animations are good, but why do we do that? Well, this is going to be what we attach our arrowheads to. So now we need to create our arrowheads. So for that, just go to the Shape tool, click and hold and grab Star, and go to Fill, set the fill to Solid Color, grab the Stroke, and set the Stroke to None. And now make sure you have no layer selected and shift and double click and that will create a star path or a star shape. Now we have this poly star group. Uh, navigate down here and under points, switch that to three and that's gonna give you a nice triangle. And I will hit enter here. We're gonna call it arrowhead one. So now we have arrowhead one, which will be attaching to arrow one. So what we can do here is since we have this null animating along the path, I can just attach the arrowhead to this null. And to do that, let me drag this down so you can see, um, maybe I'll change the airhead color here as well so we can keep this nice and organized. So I need to parent this to the null. And as I parent it, I need to hold the shift key so that it, it will overwrite all the parameters and that it will stick it directly on that location. Okay, so now I've got this. It's way too big. It's not facing the right direction. But to make this uh, more streamlined, to basically do this faster, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it twice to give us our three arrowheads. So let's go ahead and like move arrowhead two up there. Let's move arrowhead three up here. We'll put them right above the nulls to keep everything organized. Now with all of them, um, well now I need to basically connect these two new arrowheads to their nulls. So arrowhead two, I need to attach to null two. Let me switch back to source name there. So I need to connect it to null two and hold shift and grab arrowhead three, connect it to null three while holding shift. Now these are all connected and following their nulls. And I'll simply grab all the arrowheads, hit S for scale, and I'll scale them all at the same time. So that's why I did all the rigging first. And then we can do the scaling all quickly at the same time. Now I hit R for rotation, and we need to rotate these like 90 degrees so that they're facing in the right direction. Okay, so our animation is rigged now. Uh, actually, it's almost rigged. So you can, you'll notice that the paths are not, you know, we want the paths to be revealed as the arrowheads animate. So for that, we need to go back and grab the actual paths and go to add and select trim paths. And all you need to do is connect the end parameter to your null animation. So to do that, go grab your null, hit the U. So this is like the little trace path progress bar that's animating on. We w and you can see this goes from zero to 100. And our end path of our trims pa uh, trim paths animator goes from zero to 100. So all you need to do is connect this to that progress bar. And then bam, you have a dynamic arrow everything's gonna be attached. Um, and so now we basically do this for all of our other errors as well. So I can do this by like copying this trim paths and then grabbing the other arrows and pasting. But now I need to um, basically reconnect each one to its corresponding null. So go down to the trim paths, grab the end parameter of arrow two and connect it to the null progress of null two. I know this is a lot of work, but once again, you do this all up front and then you're basically, it's all set up and it's gonna be like a template that we can just use and reuse. So all the work is done up front. I don't know if I already said this at the beginning of the tutorial, but uh, all the work's done up front and then you sit back and have a bunch of cool arrows later that you're just gonna be moving around vertices to get them in whatever position you want. Okay, so this bad mamma jamma is rigged. Now, our next issue is the fact that we have this sweet little animated arrow that we can customize. Like if I go grab, like, let me show you how you can customize it. If you go grab arrow two, hit G to grab this, you'll notice now that I can move it wherever I want to move it. And it's going to, you know, go around. There we go, hit undo. So let's go here. You'll notice, though, sometimes you get these paths that, like, 
when they come to an end here, like this one in particular is freaking out. So all we need to do is go grab the path again. Where is it? Path, path, path. And at the very end here, you need to convert that Bezier handle and that will snap that in place and make it behave like a good boy. So the next step is we wanna make this a little more dynamic looking. All these arrows are like the same size, so it's not very cool. I wanna have one big arrow and then maybe two smaller ones. So let's say we want this top one to be the large fat arrow and then these will be um, a little bit smaller. So basically arrow two right here is gonna be the fat one. So we'll bring the width of this one up to like, let's do like 300. There we go. And I'll grab arrowhead, arrowhead two. We're gonna scale this one up to something like 25. We'll make it um, nice and big like that. Now you'll notice um, that it's not lined up. It's like a little bit offset. That's because our anchor points up here. We'll tweak that in a little bit. I'll show you how to fix that. Grab this and then bring it back to like something like right here. Actually, yeah, let's make arrow three just a little bit smaller. So let's do something like 85 and then grab arrowhead three and scale it down to like 12. Okay, so now everything's rigged up. We've got this nice animation, um, arrows of different sizes. However, this isn't the look that I want. If I turn off guides and rulers, take a nice look at it, you'll notice that I don't have the nice curved flow that I want. So how do we get that? Well, the real secret sauce here is we go and add a new layer adjustment layer layer, adjustment layer, and we're going to go to effects and presets, and I want you to search for something called simple choker and drop that on the adjustment layer. So having that up here, it's going to apply it to everything. And now as I start to crank this up, you'll notice that we start to get some nice, like check this out, it's starting to all curve together. So I'll bring it to something like 30. And that's going to basically pull everything, like choke the edges and like pull them back a little bit. And it's going to curve and smooth everything out. Once again, you'll notice that this arrow is looking a little wonky and offset. So if we go to the arrowhead right here, hit A for anchor point and then grab the Y parameter. So we're going to grab the Y parameter and start to pull it out. And we want to put this at the end. So you pull it out right here and you want to make it just to where it's still connected and then it's going to look much nicer and now we get this nice curve at the end of our line um, at the end of our arrow which is just great and you can do these to the other arrows as well if you need to so i could grab arrowhead three here a for anchor point and we're only adjusting the y here so pull this out and immediately you'll notice it's looking so much better so you can go kind of crazy with this if you want you know really crank it up a lot one thing that you might want to do is you can go up here and throw a blur. So grab a Gaussian blur and put it above your choker and then set that to roughly the same amount. And that's going to smooth it out even more. But sometimes in your little little corners here, your corners will kind of fall apart. So if you throw a blur in there, it'll keep uh, keep it nice and smooth. OK, so we've got our snazzy little arrow animation here. It's looking great. I'm going to head over to a real geo layers project and let's see how we can work with this arrow. So I'm going to grab the actual arrow comp and drag it directly into the geo layers comp here. First, I'm going to grab the pan behind tool, keyboard shortcut Y, and I'm going to move the anchor point back here. This will allow me to just quickly manipulate these arrows so I can scale it down um, and then maybe bring it over here and do something like this, rotate it around like this and now we want to attach it to the map so i'm going to parent this to the map comp anchor and then turn on 3d so that this will now move with the map it'll zoom and scale with the map it will rotate and pivot with the bearing any bearing changes anything like that it will move so if we zoom in a little bit it's going to zoom in by the way this is a raster now so if we zoom too far in you will see pixels so just be aware of that and plan accordingly Okay, so this is looking pretty flat and boring. We have the cool curves now, but it's just not, still not working. So what can we do here? Well, first let's add a little shadow like we saw in our reference. So if I duplicate the comp and call the one at the bottom shadow, I can now come to effects and presets, grab a drop shadow, just keyword search drop shadow, plop it on there and turn on shadow only. Let's look at it. So we have shadow only. 
we want to set the distance to zero and the opacity to 100 because this is a really strong shadow in the reference maybe not quite 100 actually what the heck 100 i don't even care and now we grab uh the, we turn the top one back on what the heck we can't see it well you need to grab this top one and pull it off the map a little bit and to pull it off the map you can make sure you have the widget set to local access mode up here make sure it's not set in world access and if you hover over the z position you can start to move it up if you just hit p for position you'll notice that it's just the z parameter that i'm moving right here so i'm going to manually set this to something like 650 and i think that's looking pretty good so that immediately adds a ton to this look there's something missing though there's just a little in fact that's that's actually still too high compared to our reference we want it to be really close and that shadow to be really really strong okay now what i can do is with this top arrow i'm going to add a little stroke i want to add a black stroke so that it pops on the edge out here too so go to layer layer styles and select stroke and that's going to add by default this horrible red color just set that to a black um, maybe nine percent and maybe two pixel width you know do whatever you want set it on the inside outside center whatever you think looks the best gives you more of a curved edge if you're putting it on the inside if you're going for that curved edge so that's pretty cool now this is animating on our map but what if we want to you know tweak it a little bit more like we're going too far north we want to go more over here and this straight line is not looking that great we actually want to curve it out well it's super easy now we just jump into this pre-comp and we go to the actual paths and we start to make adjustments so i'm going to bring this one back um, and now actually let's say we want to like curve it uh, let's say we want to actually go this way like we want to go down this way and you know I want it to be bigger and you'll notice it's keeping these beautiful beautiful curves okay uh, 18 make that one a little bit bigger and this one we want to change the path of this one uh, so we grab this move it down here something like that very very cool yeah, starting to act up again and this one's just a little too far down so let's grab this up oh, got to be careful here grab this and shift click this one and we can like drag it up this way grab this part here and maybe maybe I really want to like pull it out this way and now you can see how cool that is to customize that because we're all pulling from one comp here. It's one, everything's in this comp, even the shadow, you know, it's all the same comp. So any changes we make, it will dynamically change everything. So it's looking great. Even if we say, oh, the start here of our arrow is just a little too much, we can jump in here again and maybe do something like just draw a quick little shape here to uh, like block it out. So we could take this and switch the blend mode here and change it to like a silhouette um, silhouette luma and that would cut that out and now if we come back here you see it cuts that out it's great